Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and quick little fun fact, apparently there are two types of dice camouflage. There is ordinary dice camouflage, which is black on black, much like any car in the greater Detroit area, and there's also dice LA camouflage, which is like this creamed out Versace white, which obviously is not very effective on most of the maps in Battlefield 4, but seeing as Final Stand is covered in snow, it actually is quite effective. Now, I'm going to paint with some broad strokes in terms of what exactly is new with Final Stand. Obviously, you all want to hear about the God Launcher, or this massive alien gun, or what is really just the rail gun. It's just a sniper rifle that happens to be extremely good in terms of range and its particular power. Just to give you the lowdown, it's not a charge up. It's kind of like a Spartan laser, but for example, you can't do a 70% shot. See, you hit it, it charges, and it fires. It's not like you can do a halfway shot. Like a like 50% charge or 70 75% charge, you click it, it charges up, and then it fires. You can't stop it in between. That's the way it works, and it's basically hit scan. They told us some numbers like they, they were trying to move it between 4,800 meters per second and 8,000 meters per second in terms of the actual projectile velocity, but that's basically hit scan speed anyway. So it's not the bullet velocity or the actual round of the the rail gun, or you wouldn't really call it a round. You call it a projectile for rail gun, but. It just goes extremely fast, and as soon as you fire it, it basically hits your target, no matter where they are on the map. It is very terrifying, but it's not very its not very difficult to understand. It's pretty simple. Also, too, the snowmobiles, an extremely great <laughs> new, new form of transportation, except for the fact that they can explode very easily. You get a lot of air with them, and they go really, really quickly over large obstacles, so just... Beware that if you go a little bit too gnarly on some of these jumps, you can definitely make yourself explode very easily. Now, on to hovering tanks. Hovering tanks are very effective in terms of mobility, but at the same time, they are very, very clunky as to how their accuracy works. It's not like you can just freely move around the turret like a regular tank. You won't really understand what I'm saying until you actually play it, if you do end up playing it on CTE this week. But it is very odd the way that the aiming system works. It's not perfectly smooth, and oftentimes just strafing it around is a little bit more effective because the actual aiming system of the hover tank is very clunky. But obviously that some of that sort of disability that you have with aiming is, is mitigated, or it's... It's okay just because it's so incredibly maneuverable and fast. Like, C4ing them is going to be extremely difficult, as is throwing AT mines. One of my, one of America's favorite pastimes of mine, obviously throwing slams on everything that moves. It's, it's not as easy to do against a, an extremely mobile strafing tank that can go in any particular direction it wants. It's not like it's, it's limited by the tank treads of an ordinary conventional tank where it has to go in the direction that it's pointing. It can strafe in any direction that it wants to. And the hovering, the hovering gets a little goofy if you throw it off of its axis, but yet again, a lot of this you will understand in due time once you see people using it more and more frequently. In this helicopter here, I wanted to give you a basic overview as to exactly what this, maps of, this map of Operation Whiteout looked like. It's not all that different from a regular, I, I mean, I, I'd like to say it's a little bit like a, a tighter silk road. There's not a whole lot of cover in between flags. It's kind of sandy, but obviously instead of sand, you have a ton of snow, which I welcome openly. I love, I absolutely love snowy maps. It's something that, you know, White Pass, and it reminds me of Bad Company 2. I mean, I'm not going to say that necessarily snow maps are inherently good, but just the change of scenery is something that I welcome with open arms. And this gives you a rough overview of what it looks like, but it seems like there's a cluster of flags in a line near the center of the map, and then there's these other auxiliary flags that are near the outer edges, which obviously are very fun to flank out to, but keep in mind that these, this particular footage that I got in Los Angeles, it's not exactly representative of what you're going to see in regular games, just because this was like 15 on 15 in a game mode that is supposed to hold 64 players. So just take all of this particular gameplay as something that is going to be fairly different from what you see if you see it on a stream or if you play it yourself. Now this is Giants of Karelia. I kept calling it Karalia for some reason, but this map is... I want to say it's super linear because the map is built around this, this stream in the very middle. And then there's a, a cluster of flags, but I have to say that it's probably going to be very unfortunate for you if you are American. It seems like there's this funnel that's... If you come out of your spawn, you're very, very funneled as an American and not so much as a Russian, which I think is inherently going to be a little bit unbalanced. But there's a cluster of flags on either side of the map. But I, I have to say, back capping might be a serious, seriously good plan. If you can do it frequently in the 
in the jet ski, which I decided to do over and over and over again. But really, I wasn't flanking to try to back cap or try to really win the game. What I was trying to do was I was trying to explore more so than trying to win the game more than anything else. It's not like I was really focused on tryhard or anything else. But one thing that I do want to... I mean, the, the real thing that interests me more than anything else, more than the railgun, more than the new maps, more than, you know, that UAV, more than anything else, is the SC-42. You guys have no idea how much this thing interests me. Now, just to give you an idea of what it is, I think a lot of you are, are sort of confused about what exactly it does. Picture a gigantic box that fires like a shotgun. It fires a cluster of rounds or cluster projectiles that happen to be explosive and extremely deadly. So look at this thing. It can flip pretty well anything or toss it in various different directions, whether it's friendly or enemy. And it's very, like, it's mysterious to even me after I used it round in and round out. I used it probably more than any other vehicle or any other weapon that was new in Final Stand. It can toss vehicles in different directions, but at the same time, oftentimes it will kill the passengers without blowing up the vehicle. So exactly how it works or exactly how it kills, and that's another example right there. Oftentimes you don't even need to break or you, you don't even need to destroy the helicopter that you're firing at. If you hit it in the tail rotor or you get any kind of center mass shot on it, it will throw off the pilot so much, it just makes him tank really easily because it completely imbalances his whole flying pattern. It's it's something that you won't quite understand until you use it, but yes, it can in fact take down jets, which I found to be a little bit ridiculous, but at the same time, I understood that that's not all that far-fetched for this weapon, because not only do I think it's it's imbalanced, I think it's fairly broken, because it can toss around friendly and enemy vehicles like they're absolute pieces of cardboard or something. And there's something else that I'll show you in just a second here. The equivalent of Dan Mitre, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are familiar with Dan Mitre, he's essentially the the community manager for the United States region, then there's his counterpart in Europe is a guy called EA Action Man. And I kill him inside of an AA. It's very confusing to me as it is to you, but I'll, I'll show you in a second. Now, here's where it might get a little bit annoying if you're trying to cap a flag and you have a, a bit of a trickster on your team. You can toss around any friendlies and snowmobiles and... Yeah, they go everywhere. They get blasted in random directions. And the best part is... It's kind of just dice physics. For example, I'm hitting, like, like, look, I'll hit him from the front and then he'll accelerate towards me. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You know, in physics, you know, equal and opposite reaction, you expect if I'm going to hit a guy right in, like, right in front of him, he's not going to come towards me, he's going to go away from me, but I'm just going to leave that as dice physics. So this is probably my most enjoyable part, or the most enjoyable part that I saw with the new DLC, just how broken this thing is. But I don't really have a name for it yet. The the guys at DICE, especially Tom Anderson, he called it the Metal Storm. Apparently that's what they're calling it. So I imagine that's what I'll be calling it in the future, the Metal Storm. But here, look at this. This is where EA Action Man was in the AA. I didn't blow it up. I didn't blow up his AA, but I don't even get a, a weapon specified for how I killed him, but I somehow killed him. So this thing works in magical, mysterious ways. I'd like to also let you guys know that beyond these new weapons and everything else, we can't exactly upload all the footage that we have from LA yet because they want us to do essentially one map per day so there's gonna be a new map tomorrow and then obviously the next day on CTE so I'll be streaming all of it if you guys have specific questions I welcome that form a little bit more because it's a little bit easier if you guys come over to the live stream you ask me questions about the DLC and chat and then I can answer you on the fly that's a little bit easier for me than you posting a bunch of questions in the comments and then I'm trying to respond to them individually so I'll be live streaming the new Final Stand DLC quite a bit if you'd like to join me I will leave a link down in the description for your bonus clip, I'm going to show you a little bit of a highlight reel for what I got, or this one particular sequence with the, the Metal Storm that I find fairly hilarious because it shows you exactly the not only the range, but just the killing power against both infantry, a helicopter, and a snowmobile. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I will see you guys tomorrow with a new Final Stand video. Hope you guys join in on the live stream, and I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und Shader.